Welcome to hemodynamic basics. So we're going to start with the normals. I do have older videos on this. So now that I know what I'm doing a little more on YouTube, I am going to re-record this and have some better graphics for you. So as you can see here, these are the list of normals. Now, this is not how I list it when I kind of go through patients. I draw a little what I call a butterfly or four leaf clover heart, and I'll show you that in a second. But I want to walk through what you're looking at first. And if you notice, these are color coordinated for a reason because there's actually pairs. So in order, I like to have the um, right-sided blood flow and then kind of two left-sided pressures. So you have RA, right atrium, right ventricle, PA, pulmonary artery, pulmonary wedge pressure, which is representative of left atrial pressure, AO, aortic pressure, and LV, left ventricular pressure. Now we obtain these these during right heart cath where the catheter is in each chamber and it transduces the pressure. These during left heart cath when the pigtail is in the aorta, I'm sorry, when the pigtail is in the left ventricle and pulled back into the aorta. Now this is representative also of systemic blood pressure. So the blood pressure you're taking on the arm when you're transducing a pressure from your femoral sheath or radial sheath, it's gonna have this same schematic where it's systolic, just diastolic and mean arterial pressure. But the one specifically we're really looking for here is close to the aortic valve in the aortic root, ideally, because we're using these two pressures to evaluate the aortic valve for any stenosis. So even though I could get, let's say, a femoral arterial pressure, that's not what I want to use in this case in this evaluation, because I'm specifically looking at valves and those things closest to the heart. Okay, so what do each of these represent? Even if you memorize all of these numbers, you really need to understand what each of these are accounting for because they mean something different. So for instance, I could have this number really, really high and these normal, and that would still be significant. We're not just looking at is everything high, but we're also looking at individually. If this is high, this could mean something different than if this is high. So we'll start with the right atrium. You have A, V, and mean. Now please note these, all these numbers have ranges. All of these areas have ranges. The only reason that I write it this way is because I can memorize this, I can regurgitate it, rewrite it a million times. And when you are learning a little more in depth, yes, learn the ranges, but imagine if you were learning ranges for each of these that can be very difficult to do successfully. So kind of start here with the basics, and then when you're a little more advanced, you can kind of learn some of these exact ranges for the LVEDP, RVEDP, and the wedge pressure mean, which are some of the important ones you want to know ranges for. And lastly, all of these values are in millimeters of mercury, MMHG, that is their unit of measure. So you would say, oh, the RA mean is three millimeters of mercury. Okay, that's a pressure measurement. So again, we're gonna start here. This is A, V, N mean. So A is six, V is five, mean is three. The left atrium or the pulmonary wedge pressure is written in the exact same way that 10 represents A, 13 represents V, and eight represents the mean. Now the mean here, and the mean in, if you notice, like your mean arterial pressures are not calculated in the same way. So the mean here, you can't get based off of these numbers. It's actually from the waveform itself where you're calculating kind of an average of A and bottom of the X descent, which again, a little more advanced, we will end up going into that, but I just don't want you to think this comes from the same formula that these come from because they're different, which is why I write this as M and I write out, and I write out these as MPAP and MAP, mean arterial pressure, mean pulmonary artery pressure. So I don't just write M and get confused and think that these two are the same because they're not. Next up are the ventricles. So the right ventricle and the left ventricle, you notice, are written the same way. Systolic, beginning diastolic pressure, and end diastolic pressure. So please, even if you're writing it as the abbreviations, know fully what each of those things mean and I've written it to the right for you. So again, systolic or systole, systolic pressure, beginning diastolic pressure, and end diastolic pressure and that will be reflective of the same both in the right ventricle and the left ventricle. Out of these, the EDP is very important, and this is when you're measuring on the monitor what you see where it kind of looks like 
if this is a normal LV pressure, you'll see it's kind of like zoomed in almost and cut off because you're just on a more highlighted scale. So you're not seeing this top part and you're only looking at the EDP down here. Next up are the arterial pressures. So pulmonary artery and AO, aortic pressure, systolic, diastolic, and a mean of some kind. So for the PA, it's MPAP, mean pulmonary artery pressure. And for the AO or systemic pressure, it's mean arterial pressure or MAP. Next, I just wanna do an overview and kind of show you how I draw things out. You can put many, many more layers on here, but this is just a single example. Okay, so this is my butterfly or four leaf clover heart. I know anatomically it is not correct. That is not the purpose of it. The purpose of it is for you to easily identify and write down some of the numeric values and pressure values in each of the chambers in a way that's easy to understand. You can see where it's going, where it came from, and then reference it throughout the case or as you are evaluating a patient after a case or doing an example for the boards, for instance. I also draw the valves in here because if you're first learning, that's something that's kind of easy to get confused or forget. Okay, and I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit or it's gonna bother me. Okay, so next you need to label what the chambers are because again, it's, it's very easy to confuse things and it's just better if you just don't even guess and when you're in a rush, you don't accidentally put it's in a different chamber than it actually is. Okay, even left atrium, you should make sure you write pulmonary wedge pressure if you're not getting a direct left atrial pressure, which you really aren't unless you're doing a transeptal puncture, or PFO closure, or something like that. And then we are going to write our normals. So I will write them in red. Six, five, three, 25, zero, four, 25, 9, 15, 10, 13, 8. Personally, I always write them in the same order as well because that's how they're registered in my brain. We are the sum of my habits, as my dad would like to say. 80, 93. And then I would even take it a step further, again, if you're first learning, and write what they mean. So AVM for me, systolic, beginning diastolic, and diastolic pressure, systolic, diastolic, and PAP, AB mean. Remember there's pairs in this way anatomically, you can see where those pairs are located versus in the list of pressures. It's not that obvious. And that map. Okay, and another thing you might want to do, especially if you're working through a complex patient, is put, right, the PA goes to the lungs, and then the lungs bring, wow, that was written really weird, to the lungs, and then the lungs bring oxygenated blood back to the pulmonary veins, and then the aorta brings oxygenated blood to the body. Okay, so now let's walk through why this is important and kind of what this looks like if I'm working through a patient. So the first one that's really common that we do on like every pullback in the lab, right, is evaluate for aortic stenosis. So what we're looking at is the AO systolic pressure and LV systolic pressure. So notice here the way I wrote my normals, they're the same, right? I wrote 120 and 120 because if they're both equal to each other, then that means is there a gradient or is there not a gradient? There is no gradient. A gradient is a difference in pressure. So what a gradient would look like, let's say we give this patient aortic stenosis, let's make this AO pressure 100, and let's make this LV pressure 140. That's 140 minus 100, which is a 40 millimeter of mercury gradient. Okay, and that's where you would look at that and go, oh, does this patient have aortic stenosis? You could do that exact same thing on the other side with the RV systolic pressure and the PA systolic pressure if you evaluate that. The other thing you wanna look at in every patient are the EDPs. 
Okay, RVEDP and LVEDP, those are good signs of left-sided or right-sided heart failure if they are elevated. And again, remember there's ranges for everything. So when, if we're being dramatic here, let's say LVEDP of 30 or 40, right? RVEDP of 20 or 30. Those are very, very high values. And then you also are looking at in the atrium, A and V. So if you notice six and five and 10 and 13, are very close to each other respectively, right? Six and five is close and then 10 and 13 is close. So what would be indicative of regurg? So on this side is what valve? The mitral valve. And then what's on the other side? The tricuspid valve. So a sign, right? A hallmark sign of let's say mitral valve regurgitation was let's make this 23 so now a is 10 and v is 23 so v is now double two times greater than a that is indicative of mitral regurg and again you could do that same thing on the other side i hope that's helpful just as a, a walkthrough of some examples of how to use this visual and this visual can help you see how okay this would affect then my RV. Then if I have right-sided heart failure, it would back up to the right atrium. Then when you have this really high right atrial pressure, I'm going to start seeing that positive JVD or maybe even peripheral edema, right? This is the IVC collecting blood from the lower extremities or aortic stenosis, right? I have aortic stenosis. All this um, blood is being restrained here, increasing my LV pressure that backs up into the atrium, which backs up into the pulmonary veins, which goes to the lungs. And then maybe I might see some increased PA systolic pressures when it gets really out of control and chronic. So visually you can kind of see that. Whereas if you just write it in a list like this, you don't always get that full body picture that you can and make some new connections when you're first learning on here. So I hope that helps. Give this a like and please subscribe to my channel. And again, I'll be redoing some of these to enhance them a little more and add some better audio for you guys. Thank you so much for being here and supporting. I really enjoy doing this for you and I hope this helps.